Okay, so we're gonna jump back into Photoshop today and I'm gonna show you how you can create some fog completely from scratch. There's lots of different ways to do it. You can use brushes, images, but we're gonna be doing this completely from scratch with no assets whatsoever. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create more realistic fog in Photoshop without any pre-existing assets. Now, when I first started learning Photoshop all those years ago, one of the first things I learned was about going to filter, down to render, and selecting clouds. I've created clouds, it was amazing, but looking back, the stock clouds, they, they weren't the best, you know? And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can use that as a starting point. And then with a few tweaks here and there, you can actually make those clouds or fog in this case, look much more realistic. So without further ado, let's jump to the screen and get started. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop and you can see I have an image. This is an image of a soldier on a dark background. Now you can do this with any image, but I do find that images with darker backgrounds tend to look a little bit better with this effect. And there's lots of ways you can apply fog to an image. You can use brushes or you can use actual photos of fog and blend those in. I've covered those before in previous tutorials, but in this one, we're going to generate the fog all from within Photoshop. So you can see I've opened up my image. I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the layers panel and create a new layer and we'll name this fog. Seems suitable. And next, just check my background color is black. You can just drag that to the bottom left corner we're all good. Click OK and we'll go to filter down to render and select clouds. Looks something like this. Mm, not great. Depending on the size of your image, it might look more or less dense. What we're going to do is right click on our fog layer and go convert to smart object. The reason we do this is because all the different effects and things that we do in a moment to this layer, we can then edit them or delete them later on. Otherwise, those effects will be final. And the only way to reverse them is to go edit, undo, undo, undo. So we now have our smart object and we're gonna to go to edit and free transform. And I'm just going to zoom out and then drag holding shift from the corner so it stays in proportion. And we can also hold down alt or option and we'll scale to or from the center. So I'm gonna blow this up nice and big, depending on how dense you would like your clouds or your fog to be. And we can press enter or return to set that transformation. Enter or return, they're the same thing. Press return or double click to set that transformation. And then what we can do is zoom back in and we can drag this around so we get a lot more flexibility. So we can drag this around, find a nice patch of fog that looks good. Let's go for something like this. And then what I can do is change the blending mode from normal to either lighten or screen. I personally find that screen retains a little bit more detail, so I probably use this one a bit more. And what these blending modes do is lighten and screen will essentially take the dark areas of the image and blend that into whatever is underneath and it will retain the lighter areas. So there we go. We can actually see our image underneath now, which is good. And we can move this around and fine tune that depending on where we want the fog to appear. We can also go up to image down to adjustments and select levels. And we can grab the midtones. We can adjust that here to make our fog more pronounced, more foggy like this or less foggy by creating more contrast. And we can also drop the output levels for the white as well. So levels can be very useful for controlling your fog. We can click OK, and as I mentioned, this is a smart object, so we get levels listed here. We can turn it off. We can turn it back on. We can double click on the levels text to edit, or we can just drag that down to the trash if we want to delete it, but we don't. Next, we're gonna go up to image, adjustments, and hue and saturation. And for this one, what we're gonna do is check colorize. Now, if you're Image has a background, it might be a red background, a blue background, whatever kind of hue is very prominent in your image, it's good to change the color of your clouds so they match. So I believe the background for this soldier was like a very, very, very dark blue. Not quite like this, this looks a bit mental. I mean, you could use this if you wanted. 
I'm going to bring my saturation all the way down. So this is where we were before, completely desaturated clouds or fog. And just introducing a little bit of color, even if it's something really subtle like this, you can see that does make a difference. And we'll click OK. Let's just have a look at our image. It's pretty dark, it's pretty dark. So either way, if you have a color that is prominent in your image, or let's say you have a light, for example, a light source that might be green, introduce a little bit of that color, a bit of that green into your image so that your fog is affected by the elements around it, whether it's a background color or a light source, whatever it is. Something else we can also do is we could drop the opacity if we want. I tend to avoid doing this too much because it can look a little bit strange when these lighter areas suddenly become darker in like a very inauthentic way. I find that you can either go really subtle or like more pronounced. If you kind of go in the middle, eh, it can look a little bit off and you can use levels and other adjustments instead. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of things we can do to this, but one other thing I'm going to do is go to filter down to liquify. This is a little bit tricky to do. Now this looks very strange. I think I've got a bit of a sc screen render issue going on here. No idea what this is, but let's just bring the opacity back up to 100%. We can adjust the brush size using the left and right square brackets on the keyboard. And what you can actually do is you can actually do some of this. Now you don't want to go too crazy with this, but you can use this to introduce a little bit of movement, a bit of flow to the fog. Now you don't want to go too crazy. If we turn the preview off and on, you can see where we started and where we are now. So there we go, we didn't actually affect the right part of the image, so it's a little bit tricky, like I say. Let's do something more pronounced, just so you can see it. This doesn't really look like fog anymore, <laughs> but we'll just see what this looks like, just for fun. I mean, like I say, it doesn't look anything like fog, but we've created wind, so uh, use liquify with care. But remember, this is a smart object, so if we completely screw this up, we can always just turn it off like it never existed, drag liquify to the trash, and then just do it again. But if you do it subtly, you can just create a little bit more movement, not like that, but a little bit more movement within your fog effect. And there we go. So that is how you can take the old filter render clouds effect, and you can use that to kind of tailor your own clouds, your own fog, your own mist, whatever atmospheric effects you're trying to create. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do have any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.